each person can choose what it is that most that really ignites their heart what ignites your heart what is it that you're passionate about what are you passionate about what makes you feel alive what makes your heart sing that is your purpose that's your mission Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. I'm Louisa, your host. Welcome to Passion Harvest. Thank you so much for joining me. Wherever you are in the world right now, I am so excited about my guest today, Grandmother Mulara. Grandmother Mulara is an Aboriginal elder and teaches sacred knowledge and spiritual mastery. Her wisdom is written in the land and holds our memories since the dawn of creation, the dream time or universal consciousness. She teaches others so that we can all live in good health and harmony with the land and each other. To not forget who we truly are, the ancestors are watching over us. Grandmother Malara pays her respects to the Aboriginal elders, past and present, of the sacred land and waters of Australia. This is her story and this is her passion. Grandmother Malara, it's an honour to have you on the show today. Welcome to Passion Harvest. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, gosh, you do so much incredible work, particularly with the Aboriginal culture and the land of Australia. Um, you're probably the best, one of the best people to speak to. What can the, well, I guess my first question would be, how can one connect more with the earth and with the land and more in balance with the natural world? I, I feel that you have to connect with yourself first and foremostly. So we have what we call a miwi. It's pronounced, what well, miwi, but it's mm -hmm. uh, spelled M-I-W-I, miwi, or one elder calls it mui. Uh, but that is our, we call that our soul print, and that's like a space in between the solar plexus and your navel. And we need to connect in there. That is where we say that uh, our soul has come in. We See, we reverse the spirit-soul um, understanding because we see our spirit. We see spirits in the land occasionally, and we may even see the spirits of our ancestors. So we know we're spirit, but in this incarnation, we are soul, a soul landing in this body skin suit as a soul. So just so that people don't get confused, I say spirit soul in one word. Which is the same. <clears throat> so, okay. Which doesn't stop people going, oh, yeah, but aren't we supposed to be souls and we're travelling and we're a spirit? No, it's the other way around. Anyway, back to the me we listen. Yeah. So connect your miwi to Mother Earth, and the miwi is your centre point. I'm, you know, I'm actually putting my hand over mine while I'm talking to you. And to connect more uh, profoundly with Mother Earth, you could do a number of things. One is to put your miwi onto the ground, face, face down onto the ground, and plug in your umbilical cord, like an etheric umbilical cord from your navel into, the, into Mother Earth. So that's one way in which you can really connect in deeply, particularly if you haven't been connecting for a while. That's a really good way to feel the difference when you are connecting into the earth. Another way, if you find it hard to lay on your, on your front, is to actually do that with a tree. You can actually connect to the tree using your, um, your etheric umbilical cord and feeling the exchange of energy from your etheric umbilical cord and then the energy coming back into your miwi. So that's another way that you can connect. But ultimately what you want to do is recognise that you are an electromagnetic field yourself or the, what the grandmothers would call magnetotelleric field, a natural, a natural field of energy and our field of energy connects to the field of energy to Mother Earth. It's like a torus in its um, uh, dynamic movement. And to connect that way into Mother Earth is to ground yourself. So I've just given you two tips on how to do that. Another would be to be barefoot, walking barefoot on the earth, particularly grass, um, 
even I can't walk barefoot where there's prickles in the grass, as sometimes there is. Or snakes. So otherwise, it's <laughs> yeah, or mm, snakes. Yes, you yeah. don't want to be walking there. Um, so how does that sound? Is that something that I I think it's it's I think it's beautiful. I just wanted to ask the audience, and I've uh, the given them a little bit of background in your introdu- introduction, most of your thoughts or philosophies or beliefs are based on Aboriginal Australian culture. I spent maybe nearly 50 years sitting with the, the old women, the senior law women, all throughout Australia. Uh, so it's a bit unusual. Ordinarily, you would grow up in community in, a, in your tribe and you would learn from your law woman or from the women, and then, you know, in the tribe, you would become a law woman first, and not everybody gets to be a senior law woman. You only just have one per tribe, and that one holds the spiritual energy and the spiritual law, the law of nature, uh, as well as the Elawari law of the um, people, of the cultural law. In my case, is unusual because I was secretly recruited many years ago, 50 years ago, uh, and I was sort of sent to different ones over that time to sit with, as we say, or to walk with, to learn from those senior law elders. And every one of them pretty much said, if you don't get those teachings out there, girl, they won't know how to look after themselves. And what they meant was for these times, that's what I've come to realise. I'm now a senior law woman. I am, although I'm an Adnamatna woman, which is in the Northern Flinders Ranges, I'm not actually a senior woman in that culture because our law fin- it was finished in 1946-47 um, because our people were being murdered because they were, you know, when they're practicing their spiritual law and the settlers were afraid of their power and would massacre them and so to stop our people from being massacred our senior law men finished the law and said no more so it's not possible to be a law keeper of my of Adnamatna country which has created a lot of disturbance I might add but I am a senior law woman of and been given the grandmother law LORE. So I hold the grandmother law and the grandmother law teachings, which are sort of for the whole of Australia. So I'm a bit different in that regard. Um, and many of the Aboriginal uh, insights and traditions are, are sacred and secret that can't be revealed to many people. Some, some are secret. It's all sacred. Mm-hmm. The land so. is sacred. Teachings are sacred. Um, and some are, you know, you get to learn and feel into it and get imbued with the spiritual prowess as, as you go through initiation. But there are secrets that are only held by the high initiates. Um, you, you spoke just before about sometimes you see the ancestors of the land or the spirits of the land. Do you mind just talking about that a little bit more and how we you mentioned how we can connect with the land, but how to connect with those elementals or those elements as well? That's a big question. I'm not sure who your audience is. Um, <clears throat> uh, I can give an example might mm-hmm. be a better way of saying so. Today, we had an auspicious elder pass over where he hasn't passed yet. I mean, he's passed, he's died, he hasn't crossed over yet. And so what I did was I've connected to him and telepathically spoke with him while he was readjusting his, um, readjusting from not being in a skin suit anymore. Mm -hmm. And he's in that spirit, he's, he's in the spirit world and walking he will walk as a really important ancestor. Uh, And so we need to sing him home. So what I did was connect to him telepathically and explain what had happened to him and to, and just put in a beautiful blue um, uh, energy around him while he was making those adjustments and wasn't thrown out and taken in, in the wrong direction, so to speak. How important it is is it to connect 
based on your geographical location? Well, it's where you live. Where you live is where you work, where you play, where you sing, where you dance, um, where you create. It's really important. Um, but you can do that by the same sort of thing I just su mm -hmm. suggested before, to connect your, your umbilical cord into the earth. So if you are travelling and you've moved, not too many people are travelling at the moment, but if you're travelling and you're moving from country to country, uh, what you do is you pull up your earth star chakra, you know, your mm -hmm. connection or your taproot from earth, and then you take that with you and wherever you go, you plug back in again. I'm not sure if I've answered the question. You have but, uh, beautifully. Thank you. My next question is why, I mean, I think I know the answer, but why are a, a certain individuals called to different lands or different geographical locations or someone might travel somewhere and which is not their home and they feel like it's home? What, how would you explain yeah. that? Well, if you're coming to Australia, we say you're coming home. Okay. We say you're all from here at some stage or another. And I really have the authority to speak of Australia not so much on other countries. But we do know, although we travel in the dreaming everywhere, I can say that, you, you know, the call, the calling to be in a place, that call can be an ancestral call. It could be you can hear the song in your field. The song of the land could be calling you. It could be... Um, the spirit of the land calling you, which is different again. And when you feel you feel at home in that place, you go, wow, this is this, you know, I don't know why, but I feel really good here. That's great. Because it's quite possible that your ancestors called you there. You have work to do there. It's also possible that your song line, your personal song line, is connecting you to that place as well as from where you were born. Could be any number of things, but I would say that the here in Australia, when people come here, and there's many of them, I've met many people, many, many people, who say, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I've, I'm from the other side of the world, and yet I come here and I feel at home. And I go, yeah, you're welcome here. You've come home. And so that could be the same for anywhere in the world. You can feel that you've come home. Your spirit soul has a place there, knows that resonance or that vibration of that place. Would that also imply that we potentially have lived another incarnation in that geographical location? Yeah, quite possibly. Although uh, the Indigenous people say they don't believe in reincarnation. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and, and I'll explain because we can, you know, those who can see, who are clairvoyant, can actually see the ancestors there. And so we say, well, there's a belief that we only have one life in this skin suit. However, in my training, that's not true. In my training, we could have many lives in many types of suits, not just human form. We could be interplanetary, interdimensional. We can be a rock, a lizard. We could be a tree. We could be um, a bird. We could have been many things. And evolution brings us to this point where in this lifetime, because we've followed law, natural law, because we uh, look after our totems, then we get the chance to live a life in this skin suit this time around as a human. Very interesting. You spoke about the song lines or the earth energy lines, as some people call them. Do you mind just describing to the audience what the Aboriginal song lines are? <laughs> you <asked> big <laughs> I can talk about the weather if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good question. But, um, you know, how much time do we have? Uh, first of all, in summary, in summary, I know. <laughs> First of all, yeah, yeah, yeah. The song lines are the way in which we navigated, originally how we navigate across the landscape. The early anthropologists never met an Aboriginal person who was lost. 
we didn't have buildings and, you know, man-made objects to, to have reference points. We had the song. And in the song, it's like a melody. You'd be walking along and you're singing the melody, you know, and you're singing up the land as you go along and singing yourself up. But depending on the weather, it would depend on which verse you're singing as to, you know, where, so that you would know where you are up to on your journey. To cross country, you needed to know the song so that uh, nothing untoward would happen to you. And so our welcome to country ceremony was traditionally where you were given the song in dance and uh, language to be able to um, sing up, the, to learn the song and sing it up so that you'll be able to follow your way across the country. Because while you're on our country, and when I say country, I mean the area that we, what we are responsible for and we looked after, uh, that uh, anything happened to you, then something would happen to us. So we had to make sure that you were okay by giving you the song. Um, I've, uh, uh, we also have a song within ourselves, our own, our own song. And um, I have also been given teachings about using the song lines of the planet in a way that's underneath the earth. So I work with song lines in the earth. They have a, the song lines I work with are actually got energy in them, yes. But the energy is, is with mag magnetic energy and telluric energy. So that's the natural electrical energy of the, of the planet. Think um, Tesla, mm -hmm. what he knew about natural energy and natural magnetics. That's what we, what, or what I work with in the song lines in the earth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you mentioned also that, you know, what, what times we are living in, in the world at the moment. Um, there's many Aboriginal prophecies that I've heard about in recent times. Is there any important Aboriginal prophecies that you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest yeah, audience? Absolutely. Yeah, so this is a time of the new dreaming. Um, the new dreaming, as I've been told, is a time when black fella, white fella, red fella, yellow fella, whatever you want, will walk together under the under the law of the Aboriginal law, the original law, and the original law is returning. In fact, we had a big ceremony last weekend where at the eclipse, where many of us elders across Australia, we all had a corroboree together so we'd have a ceremony corroboree we connected through with the rainbow serpent connected all of the corroborees across the country across the continent and then we sent the rainbow serpent north to canada and and the united states where elders there were holding a sacred fire with us and they said once you've connected all of you send it to us so we had a big ceremony or Corroboree, really, it was a really big one last week, Hen, to activate the law. I mean, I've been doing that anyway in my work, but this was to really wake up the land where it's been sleeping. The law is in the land. So it was to wake up the land, wake up the law, and wake up the law, L O R E, in the people who have been suffering with amnesia. We're trying to get them, everyone, to remember who you are. And in that awakening, we brought together under the eclipse, Grandmother Moon and Grandfather Sun and brought them together. Boom, and woke it up. So we say this is a time of the new dreaming and it is um, a big tumultuous time. We are about to really go through a big push that will change everything. So, I mean, some people have, have don't have hopes, but you have a, a positive outlook for the future of humanity. Mm. I do, because um, when you're connected to Mother Earth and to nature, that's what's real. A lot of things are man-made, and man-made imposition on us 
is not real. It's an illusion. So I'm positive because I'm connected to the, to the nature grid. So the grid of the earth, the grid on the surface of the earth, the Gaia grid, if you like, it's also the ancestral grid, but it's nature and nature is still thriving. You know, the birds wake up every morning and sing. You know, the sun still rises and sets. These things are really important. It keeps reminding you that we are in a right relationship with our environment. And so it's important that if you are feeling a bit confused or lost or not sure, connect to nature, connect to nature. See a part of yourself in the landscape. You know, some people report about seeing, they can say, oh, in that tree there, I can see a person in that tree. It's wonderful because I say, okay, now connect to that tree in your heart. And the more that we, we work with our heart space, so that Taurus field that I was talking about we have our own separate one in the heart and it's actually bigger than any other energy field that we emit the heart and in the heart we connect to nature she is um, natural that's nature's law natural law and I'm positive because I've been given so many teachings and um, that have come from since the beginning of time and I will pass them on, and I am passing them on. They're not mine to hold, only mine. That's not, that's not the case. We own nothing. We pass it on. And so sifting through what is truth and what is an illusion is an important time right now. And under the new dreaming, we will be able to walk together. No more separation. And I'm talking about First Nations people, in addition to those, to those who came through, who arrived via colonisation. We have to drop it. The one thing that connects us all is that we've all been colonised. We're going to drop that and the effect of colonisation and find a way to come together, talk together. You and I are talking together here now doesn't matter where we're from but we can find a way to have resonance with each other that is a positive connection and a, the, and a belonging a belonging as a child of the earth mother mother earth is our cosmic mother she is a spirit soul in and of herself I trust her. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I really like, can't wait to re-listen to this. Um, I get, no doubt you do as well. I get this question all the time. Why are we here and what is our purpose? Well, um, in the early days, as I was, when I was growing up, what I got told uh, is that, we'll see how this resonates for you, that Mother Earth, she created everything um, and was a bit lonely. And so we came in, we were in my, in my country, we're the rock people. So we say we came out of the rock, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and there are different creation stories, different parts of the continent. And we would say that we came, she brought us in to have company, to have children, to play. On her, on her surface and to interact with nature. So we're like a conduit between the energy of the earth and the energy of the plants um, and the other species. We're just one of many species that are on this planet. Um, and we've done a, quite a destructive, we've, you know, there's been a destructive effort made by our one species that needs to be um, adjusted and made good. Uh, I think the original, remind me the original question. <laughs> Why are we here and what is our purpose? Why are we here? <laughs> what right. is our purpose? <laughs> well, we're part of the, we're part of the um, uh, uh, galactic song, right? We are part of that song. We, we are part of the earth, but 
there is a school of thought that says that we're actually royalty, galactic royalty, that there have been um, many other species from other planets, planetary systems who have seeded Earth through us. So we have the DNA collectively that we, we represent the DNA of all, of all the species in the um, galaxy. I don't know if you've heard of that before. I have. But that was, okay, well, that's one school, one school of thought. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of our purpose, our purpose is to, is to live, to experience all the five senses. When you're in spirit, you don't have that. In spirit, you don't have the five senses. You don't have the sixth sense. And in our skin suit, we get to experience joy, laughter, love, compassion. And, you know, sometimes um, uh, some debilitating experiences as well. But in essence, our mission or our purpose here is to live and to keep everything alive. So the the obligation for an Aboriginal um, mob is to keep everything alive. And we do that by whatever our totem is. So we look after our totem. We make sure there's enough food for them and that they, uh, they um, you know, they can breed and they can also live um, a joyful life. And, you know, whatever our totem is might not be, a, won't be a totem for some other mob late in another area. And they can probably eat that totem, that uh, what our totem. So if you were a kangaroo, you uh, totem, you wouldn't eat kangaroo. In my country, uh, we eat kangaroo. I don't specifically, but um, others do. So it balances everything out. We all had an obligation to keep everything alive, and to look after each other, to care and share, not to take take only what we need so that there's enough there for the next mob coming through, not what we greed. And unfortunately, what's happened is that there's been, um, we're out of balance because there's been too much greed that's taken, 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 including in my country. And uh, that's actually getting corrected now in my country, but I think it might be getting corrected worldwide and we're going to be it's going to take a while for the correction to be made right again, but it's happening. And in terms of your purpose in life, I, well, I guess a mission, you, you can choose. Each person can choose what it is that most, that really ignites their heart. What ignites your heart? What is it that you're passionate about? I mean, the name of this uh, channel is something to be passionate. There you go. What are you passionate about? What makes you feel alive? What makes your heart sing? That is your purpose. That's your mission. I love it. I Do love more. It. <laughs> Thank you so much. That, that was just wonderful. Um, for those that don't know, mob is a very Australian term for group. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, tribe. Tribe, tribe. And just to define totem, what do you mean by totem? Oh, um, we are, so I said I'm Adna Matna, so we are connect to our culture. We have a skin name. So in in each group, each tribe, we have what we call, well, moiety is the Latin word for it, but we have a, a kinship law, L-O-R-E, kinship law. It's very, very important. And the kinship law says, so in my country, you're either north wind or south wind. Um and, it, you know, up, up where I live, which is in Queensland, it's um, you could be salt water or fresh water. I'm trying to keep it really simple. No, it's thank complex. you. You do. <laughs> and, uh, and so you get a totem, you know, when you're born, the grandmother would look at you and go, ah, this is, and, and whatever, notice whatever else is going on. I did a, a christening for a, a baby uh, in an area, in Byron Bay, actually, area. And now in Byron Bay, there's a dolphin. It's dolphin dreaming. Mm -hmm. So I thought this child was going to be dolphin. <laughs> but as I'm doing the christenings, the equivalent thereof is initiating. Mm -hmm. As I'm doing that and putting ochre on the child's head, forehead, there are two magpies above me in the tree. 
squawking away. And I, I just, it just, I'm looking up at them and I'm looking at this child, I'm going, this boy is a magpie, not dolphin. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Another child might have a, a wall wallaby or a kangaroo. Or a koala. Past. Or a koala, or could be born on a particular track, or have the qualities, uh, depending on the totems, the intermingling of the totems of that tribe. Look, it could be even be an ant, a centipede. I know people who are centipedes. I know someone who's an ant. Um, I even know someone who's a mycelium under the earth. You know, we can be all sorts of things, and but you can have your own personal totem. You have a totem for your tribe. Uh, and then along the way, you may find that you're attracted, you, you are looking for lessons in life that a totem can teach you. You watch, you look at how, a, how that totem operates. So if I go to kangaroo, for example, a kangaroo doesn't go backwards, always goes forwards. But you've got to watch out that you don't get your tail caught or you're done for, all right? Okay. See, so there's, there's lessons both ways for your totem. And um, my totem, actually, I am a white whale, a gnarl whale, a white gnarl whale. That's why I've got the whale up there. Okay. I've been given that, that um, the law to hold as well. So I've found that the white whale dreaming has really come to the fore in bringing through the new dreaming because with that nail with that big spear the unicorn of the sea i'm piercing the illusion and the old and making way for the new to come in so there are new song lines coming in new dreaming new legends lore myths uh new songs new dances it's it's already coming through mm. And it will come through. This is the beginning of the next seven generations. And so this tumultuous change that us earthlings are going through is, a, is signifying a very, very big shift and change in humanity big time. And this is about, when I talk about the dreaming, I'm talking about consciousness. No, no, I was going to clarify that. I'm sorry for the audience. You don't mean when you're sleeping. The Aboriginal dreaming refers to conscious awareness. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, please you, go you on. Look, <laughs> yeah. If you look at um, the Aurora Borealis or the Aurora Australis on the, each of the poles, you see that light's dancing. It's like that. It's colour, frequencies, uh, song, um, but to, to be... Oh, I forgot where I was going, but if, uh, to be in the in that sort of a dreaming, um, our people were able to to do that to go into the dream. We were in the dreaming, you know, and be anywhere at any time. We didn't necessarily move the way that we're clunky in our skin suits now. We we're able to shape shift and move through particular portals and channel. Yeah, if you know where they are. Um, I, I, I lost my train of thought from before. So, no, oh, I, you, ju you just mentioned portal, and that's a very interesting subject. I know we're almost out of time. When you talk, just briefly, I've got two more questions, if you don't mind. When you talk about shape shape shifting or portals, do you mind just briefly describing what I'll that give you, means? Yeah, I'll give you a story. So there's a place up in um, Northern Territory, I won't say where, but it's a place that people go to and they pull up with their cars and lock the cars and put their keys in their pocket and they walk in to that area and, and then when they walk out, they walk out and they arrive in northern Western Australia, a long way away. No one knows how, where they are, how they got there, but they've, they've gone into, without realising it, into a portal that our old people would have known about. And, and now the um, landowners, who, well, the, the homestead that's there are, are often now sending people back on buses back to having to get back to their cars, you know, several days drive away. That's what I mean. We would have um, our old people could turn into, shapeshift into a kangaroo, let's say, 
that they could go through a a, a it's like um, if you can imagine a, a train, you know, a train moving fast down mm -hmm. through a particular tunnel. It's a bit like that, but we could do that in the dreaming and high level consciousness and come out and be be a kangaroo and listen to what's going on in that in that area or or become an emu or become you know a, a bird that's sitting on the tree and watching what's going on but actually you're a human on the inside i don't know that's going to be probably a bit of a stretch for some people no but i think it's wonderful though there are there are certain certain people in our tribes who can do that yeah it's getting less and less um of a talent or a skill because uh, where we haven't because of the effect of colonization it's really um, altered the teachings and the way in which we can grow our, our next generations up they've all if they've been infiltrated by money greed drugs um, it, you know we have that problem as well as any other society and so they're not able to be able to go in and work with the dreaming in that way. Well, thank you. Thank you for the explaining that. Um, I guess on a final note, I'd love to discuss just briefly your incredible offerings that you have awakening, your spiritual mastery and Aboriginal healing. Do you mind just sharing with the audience mm. some of your offerings? So I run women's circles to, track, to take them through law. And I have different levels of that. I have an entry level and then we have, we move into the becoming uh, a law woman and then walking with law. And then there's more of the teachings and that can be revealed as, as the women get stronger and stronger. So, so I'm just now finishing the advanced grandmother's teachings. I opened that up at the beginning of the year. And never would I have thought I'd do this online, but here we are. Mm -hmm. And I've just done two rounds this year of the grandmother's teachings. And then we've just now on the, the sixth module of the advanced grandmother's teachings. I finish that tomorrow. And they've all been recorded, so we can we can offer them again next year. But I am about to in January uh, convert the developing your spiritual mastery into the online offering. So that's going to come. If anybody's interested, they can they can email me and I'll put them on the contact mm -hmm. list. So that's a, um, and that's grandmotherwisdom.com.au. So that, and with the developing your spiritual mastery, we look at, you know, what sort of a healer are you or a person are you? Uh, it's not any, we, we can look at a flavor of things, but from an Aboriginal perspective, we work on getting you clean. We're getting you connected to Mother Earth rather than just going up into the, into the sky and doing all of that kind of, a, you know, going that way. We get you to go into the earth and work from there. And we teach about the different grids that are in the earth, uh, um, below earth and above earth. We uh, give you a, a, it's a lot of energy healing. Our traditional healing is what we call nunkery healing. The nunkery is hands-on. We're not able to do that in the online environment. Mm -hmm. So we do it energetically. And uh, we get, I get you to be able to um, cleanse and clear your own energy field, someone else's energy field. But really important is to clear what's in our brain, our thoughts, you know, or it's actually not really in our brain, it's outside in our etheric field, but what we, the thoughts that keep going around and around and around and around and keep people awake at night and being able to clear that and getting a really sound good night's sleep and getting a really sound sense of yourself and the spiritual mastery then, it then gets, gets bigger and brighter from there. I hope fantastic. That helps. It, it, fantastic. It's amazing the work you're doing and anyone that's listening or watching Grandmother Mulara, your link, a link will be in the show notes below. Um, it's been such a delight to have you on Passion Harvest. I guess on a final note, is there anything you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience that I haven't asked you? Hmm. Uh, there is, there's been some concern 
globally about our people being hunted down and uh, by the military and jab. Well, I just want to say that's not true. Okay. That actually, that didn't happen. And then I think that this is the Nal Whale speaking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever you hear um, in your vicinity, be discerning. That's another thing I teach in these developing your spiritual masteries. Who's in your field or who's in the field? And who are you, you know, what are the, what's, what's, wh- who is it that's speaking to you in your ear? And the same thing can be about what are you reading? What are you listening to? And how do you make your discernment? And so if you can get to the truth, you have a much more balanced way of looking after yourself and others. And uh, developing your spiritual mastery is also about call, being able to know how to call in your ancestors. And I don't mean necessarily blood related. Mm-hmm. It's from your spiritual home. We know we've come from another country, the stars. And we're talking about your, your home base, your spiritual pod, where you've come from. We call in your avatar, your, your ancestor or ancestors that love you unconditionally. Not, none of this riffraff that you should be working with. You should only ever work with those that love you unconditionally. What a beautiful way to end the show. <laughs> Uh, Grandmother Mulara, thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. It's been so wonderful to have this conversation with you. Sanga. Thank you so much. (laughs) Bye-bye. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.